I know. Looks pretty sad, doesn't it? It's kind of... It's kind of embarrassing. Yeah. It's rough. Mason here. Cardinal Gaming. How's everybody doing? As you can see, uh, the famine continues for booster boxes. And pretty much all suit product at the moment for Pokemon. It's becoming very difficult to run any sort of Pokemon store when I just I just can't get any product. It's hard. It feels bad. It's embarrassing. This sucks. I have a really hard time trying to understand what is happening because nothing makes sense and the only thing I can keep telling people is I don't know when I'm going to get more of whatever they want and that's a scary situation to be in if I knew there was a delay our people were, were working on it, something was pushed back, dates were uh, given out. Any sort of communication would be really nice to have. But I am completely in the dark about what's coming, when it's going to come, how much we're going to get. It makes me look stupid. And the simple communication of what's going on so that I can plan for the next month, two months, three months before Scarlet and Violet hits. That would be really nice to know that I will have some sort of product on the shelf for the next couple months. And there are solutions, sure. I can go back on the secondary market. I can go and buy... A product, mark it up on my shelf just so I have it here. Absolutely. I can absolutely do that. But it feels bad. And it's one thing to raise the price naturally when product is scarce. But for me to go out buy something on the secondary market come back cross out the, the price tag and then put 20, 25, 30% more on that product, regardless of what it's doing on any other platform. It feels bad. It feels bad to do that. It's demoralizing to have people come into my store and not see any product on my shelf. It is demoralizing to me. It's demoralizing to them. It makes me look bad, and I've said this time and time again, that if there's no product on the shelf, I'm not a Pokemon store. <laughs> I'm just a card store that every once in a while has Pokemon products. I can, I can, I can survive. I can survive opening sealed product, busting packs, getting stuff like that. If that's how I got to get packs, that's okay. But it is the ever constant squeeze of any sort of profitability, any sort of uh, margins that I have on anything. As less of this gets available and stores around the country, just like mine, have no recourse but to buy literally whatever's left and put it on my shelf. It's, it's concerning. It's one thing for me to stock magic and have it sit on my shelves and not move. At least I have product. At least I have something on the shelf showing that I sell magic products. I'm okay with this. I can fix this. I can make this go away. I can't fix this. Not in a way that makes sense. Not in a way that makes good business sense. 
and it is discouraging. It is discouraging to try to run an event, you know, Pokemon League, all these hoops I go through to get pre-releases and stuff like that. Absolutely understandable. And I'm happy to bust product for packs, to reward my players for coming, to thank them for showing up. I'm going to give them these pop packs. Even though they are still dumb expensive, it's okay. I'm going to give them away for free. This $15 pack, somebody can come and play in my event, pay $10, and then get regular packs and this on top of it. An awesome deal. And I appreciate these. These are awesome. These are nice products and, and a nice incentives to give out. But it makes my job even more difficult when I don't have anything for people to trade in towards. I can't put anything on uh, a shelf and, and put it and make it look like, you know, look at all these uh, fun sets and things and this is what uh, has Giratina in it. This is what all these promotional boxes. I have none of that to, to show people when they come in and say, hey, I want to learn about Pokemon. What what should I be looking at? Well, I'd love to show you if I had the product. I understand that things are happening. It's just the lack of information is what hurts. I need to have some sort of clue how to schedule and predict the next three months of my business when it comes to this Pokemon product. Because I have an income that I regularly expect and want back into my store, comes out, comes back in, right? The cycle. But when I don't have any product on the shelf, there's nothing coming in or going out. <laughs> and it damages my business to not have product. In multiple ways, clearly. Because there are tons of stores around the country hosting great events, people coming out, showing out. I regularly have 15 to 20 people show up to my events, which is a decent size for a weekly event. I'm holding uh, 1Ks, larger events for flesh and blood, for magic, and expect to sell out in those events. 64 people had just had magic pre-release, had 60 people show up between the two days, which is far and above a lot of what I have expected out of these couple of events, in-person events, in a long time, especially for a pre-release. Pokemon, I need some help. I need help to make sure that my players are having a good experience when they come here. Not having product is a poor experience. And again, they have cards they want to trade in and put towards something. I have to give them cash because I literally don't have anything else to give them. <laughs> that hurts my margins, my bottom line, even further. Makes it very difficult to run a Pokemon card store without any sealed product. There are long-term ramifications to what is otherwise a short-term problem. I just hope that we hear something soon because all the stuff about being limited to one single box at $125 for a $140 product, getting a case of Crown Zenith ETVs from a distributor, from a distributor, and having to pay $40 for it when the MSRP is 50 that's a problem. I just hope that we get some information soon. 